<laughs> Shoot, I can't even. I gotta do it from the computer. Oh, go on. You can see the video. Check the video. See if we got. Uh, no, I'm. I'm sorry. Are you getting ready to post this when I go live? Live? Uh, oh, the video live? live? Yeah, live. Alright. So, Jeff? Oh, yeah, I just see it. Because I want to make sure the lab's uh, picking up before we start seeing. Twenty three, Jordan. All right. Oh, freaking got the mix on. <coughs> what is this? Starbucks refreshers, strawberry lemonade. Yeah, you want it. Sparkling green coffee, mm -hmm. energy beverage. What the flip? Get it right, I get it tight. Okay. So podcast building. Ooh, uh, ooh, ooh. Mike is hot. Cut it down a little bit. All right, that on. It was on. All right. Anybody can pull up the video. Let me see if I can hear the audio properly, please. Anybody? Let me see if I can pull it up. You guys are so deep in your phones. Hold on, bye. He's up. On Snapchat or whatever you guys are doing. All right. Snapchat or whatever you guys are doing. Sounding <laughs> <laughs> working, right? Okay, good. Let's go there. <laughs> Young Tug is stuck in my head. She's still loving me. She's my one and only. All right, who? <coughs> who we're drawing now? Gail? Which one does that Gail, Gail, yeah, switch it up. 23. 20 what? 23. 23. All right, so Facebook, all right. Are we blinking? Yes, we are. <laughs> all right, let us recall. Oh, what the flick is this? Okay. Remind me later, even though I really don't want you to remind me. Yikes. All right, Gail, whenever you're ready, go right ahead. Okay. <laughs> hello, 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 and welcome to the Entrepreneur to Entrepreneur Shift the Culture podcast, mm. episode 23, guys. Woo! What? We celebrate it so every proper. week. We're Jordan doing numbers. It. We're still doing it. Yeah, this is our Jordan episode. So if you are tuning nice. in, thank you very much for joining us. And we have a very interesting topic for you today. And Greg is going to tell you all about it. I will. I, I, okay. What, okay. Uh, what, okay. Well, uh, I think we will be discussing um, setting your business up to run or function without you. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's not being a slave or some call it to your own business where you actually go in there doing the work every day and you actually are a worker in your business. Yes. And um, I think it was uh, Tony Robbins that, uh, that likes to say, where you start working on your business instead of in your business. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what we're going to be discussing today. And I think we touched on it a little bit last week. And um, yeah, we had a little you know, <laughs> debate as to you know, what one should aim for when it comes to that particular topic. Yeah. And um, <coughs> so I guess, I don't know what angle we're going to take uh, this week. Uh, Travis, what you want? What you, want? You, know, you say you wanted to go in on this topic. So yeah. let's, let, 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 let's hear what you have to say when it comes to this particular He's about topic. To go ham. Thank you. <laughs> no, no. So I really wanted to touch on it uh, from a lot of technical perspectives in terms of running your business without you. But uh, one of the first things that kind of got me to the notion of that you should bi build your business to run without you is after reading this book called E Myth Revisited. Um, it's the E Myth. E the E Myth Revisited. So E for the Entrepreneurial Myth Revisited. Okay. Um, and just kind of a quick thing is uh, is a book by author Michael Gerber. And he sits down with this uh, girl, Sarah, who runs a bakery. Um, and she was talking to Sarah about how she got into bakery for the love of bakery, but then she was slowly like bogged down and kind of miserable because mm. she had to wake up every morning, leave every night. She wasn't spending a lot of time with family and she was getting depressed. 
Um, so basically, he talks to her with different stages of how to build your business, like a franchise model. So like building your business, like you would open up 5,000 more of these over time. And he used like a co- uh, McDonald's as an example through Ray Kroc. Mm-hmm. And the steps to do that in terms of building a standard operating procedures, um, building your... Um, building your requirements for a job position so that when you're able to move out of that position, you could have documents for what you need for, for that particular area of business to, to hire, outsourcing different things to your business. If someone's better at accounting or you know legal stuff better than you, outsource that. And building the system where your business, if you have to go on vacation or worst case scenario, you get sick, mm-hmm. the business will still run and, and be fluent without your presence there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, I think the whole premise was that you, as you mentioned, you'd be a slave to your, you, you've taken a step to become an entrepreneur, to start your own business, and then you kind of become a slave to the business and feel the same way that you would have felt at a nine to five, mm-hmm. which is, which you totally want to avoid. That's not why, you know, you're doing this entrepreneurship thing. And it just occurred to me, I think we were at the Brad Sugars mm-hmm. event, yeah. you remember, and he was talking yeah. about it, right? So he said, if you own your own business, stand up. Yeah, I had a field day at Shabby. And then... <laughs> if you but, can stand up? I, yeah, yeah. I can stand up till the end. <laughs> <laughs> or if you take, if you have, if you take vacation uh. today, if you can take a vacation today mm. and your business will be able to function without you, stand. Right. If you can go on vacation for six months and your business will still be able to make money, stand. Mm-hmm. And then I think by that time, he there were about three or four people standing in the room yeah. out mm-hmm. of all of the people that had stood up at, in the first place. Right. right. And so, you know, while you're doing this entrepreneurship thing, as you mentioned, you have to put systems in place, to put things in place so that if you are unable to be a part of the day-to-day running, or you have the option not to be a part of the day-to-day running of the business, and the business will still be able to function and make money without you. Right. Yeah, and that's that's uh, like I said, I, I had a feel there, shall we? Another event. But it was it wasn't just me because, like you said, when it got to you know how many of you can pretty much leave your business and it still runs. Yeah. It was maybe maybe three people I think it was, and it was a good crowd. Uh, I'd say probably over a hundred, maybe two hundred yeah, people or so. Yeah, it was a good size crowd. Yeah, yeah. it was a good mm-hmm. crowd. Probably about two hundred persons, and only three people were able to stand up. And I was like, "Jeez, what are I doing <laughs> with my life?" Um, but but I recognize I recognize that I need to be in that position, mm-hmm. especially when I take trips, like when I travel or whatever, then, you know, that's income stops. Yes. No revenue because it's just me. Right. So if I'm not working, then money isn't making. So mm-hmm. I am and in the process of, go ahead. Is no, it? I was thinking about people that even spend literally thousands of dollars in professions and you're still kind of trapped in the same way because if I'm a doctor or a lawyer or uh, professions that require me to be present, Mm-hmm. Like, how free are you right. actually? Uh, how free are you? Mm-hmm. Because, especially with being a doctor, a lot of people tend to choose that profession thinking that it's so lucrative and, you know, you tend to be successful. But if you don't show up for work, mm-hmm. are you making any money? Yeah. So, yeah, that was along the same line that you mentioned, you know, you baking and stuff like that, and then moving toward a model where you can take a step back and take a break. Yeah, and that's, that's, that's what I'm in the process mm-hmm. of doing right now. Um, what are you thinking in terms of what you're putting in place to enable that to happen? Well, first, it's getting a storefront so that I can hire hire persons to do what I do right mm-hmm. now. So I don't have to do is it. Home based. Yes, currently. It's, right. Currently mm-hmm. home based. Mm-hmm. So at home base and basically me doing everything, doing all have the baking. Have you been avoiding purchasing or renting a shop front up until this point? Not avoiding it. Okay. I won't lie. Initially, initially when I first started, I didn't want that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not something that I wanted. I think I wanted more of. Um, having like products in the stores like in, on shelves and packages ah, or whatever okay. mm-hmm. but <coughs> over the years I think I, it, I've grown to become more accepting of having a storefront and even now lately becoming more and more excited about doing that okay um, so I'm, I'm looking to do that to have a storefront and to be able to train people to do what it is that I do now so that I can do more mm-hmm. and um, I won't have to be there doing all these you know you know, all the baking and all of that stuff, all the delivering. I could just, you know, pay people to do that. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm in the process of doing at this time. It's just a matter of saving up the capital in order to Open move forward that. Offer. Because yeah. I, I'm not going to the bank or anything like that or get no loans or financing. So it's a matter of me just saving up the capital. Mm-hmm. And um, at this rate, I'll be able to have enough capital to do it, you know, when I want to do it, which is next July. Because, like I said, it. I hate going on vacation and then 
it's basically your money stop. Mm-hmm. Right. Stop. So whatever you have is what you have, and you ain't gonna make no more until you get back and start working again. Mm-hmm. So I want to be in a position to where I don't have to actually be doing the work in order to be generating income. What so about <coughs> um, automation of processes? Yes. Oh or man, systems? my my favorite subject. So uh, <laughs> no. So I would say that I'll admit I'm not at the point where I feel like a lot of things could be done without me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've come to that. Um, that to swallow that hard pill over the last couple of months, especially now that a lot of opportunities are open up where you need to scale and grow. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have been toying with automating a lot of my processes using different tools and resources. So, right. um, any for, examples? Anything off the top of your head? R- right. So the first, uh, the first thing that's kind of offline but still online is that I use a virtual assistant. Okay. Um, and mm-hmm. you guys knew this. So well, explain. Yes. So, a vir- yeah. so a virtual assistant uh, is basically a service that you could use, whereas like uh, I use virtual.com and I've even used Kim Cartwright, shout out to Kim, who's mm-hmm. also Bahamian, who's now uh, in Indiana. But basically virtual assistant services is that you pay uh, uh, a certain amount of money per month mm-hmm. and you get an amount of hours per month. And then you get help with a lot of uh, administrative things that you may need, like updating content or expense reports and all those different things. Mm -hmm. And I got to the point of business where that helped a lot. And Mm -hmm. even with emails and like scheduling in the calendar, that helped a a lot. But even before that, um, I looked into automating a lot of things using a lot of free tools that you could find online. Anything like Chrome extensions where, um, let's say for example, if I need to follow up with a client, uh, there's this tool I use called Follow Up CC, okay. where I would um, reply or uh, to an email, and then I put like one week follow up, mm. and then it will remind me in a week to follow with this particular client. Okay. Or even when I'm traveling, or like I say, I know I'm going um, to, if I'm going uh, to a different place, and I go on at weird time, whereas like at night or in the morning, or even if I work late, mm-hmm. there's another tool that I use called Boomerang. Okay. That allows me to automate sending out messages at a different time. So even though I write an email at three o'clock in the morning, yeah, and I do that for a bunch of emails, I can send that out in batch, uh, scheduled to go at nine o'clock in the morning or ten mm-hmm. o'clock, okay, at a regular time. So those little automations allow me a little bit more flexibility to do the more things. And then there's stuff like uh, Zapier or If This Then That, what allows you to connect different apps. If this, then that. If this, it's then like that. A flow chart. I'm picturing like a flow chart type of thing where you yeah. choose an option, and then if you choose that, you right. Know, so let's say, for example, action. if you wanted to do a lot of things with content, like you get. So let's say you took a photo in Instagram. Mm-hmm. You could connect your Instagram to Google tra- Drive to say that anytime you upload a photo, that photo gets backed up in Google Drive. Okay. So stuff nice. like that, or. Just like basic things that you probably do already, like if you post to Facebook, it goes also goes to Twitter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But like if this, then that, or Zapier, are like kind of that on drugs, where you connect a lot of different things, you won't even notice. So like if I write a note in Evernote, I could send that directly to my virtual assistant, and then they get that. Or if I make a note, it'll go onto my calendar. So all those different things. So okay, so if you're an entrepreneur, just let's say you're just starting out or you're fresh in the business six months to a year mm-hmm. um the tools that you're mentioning are they low cost high cost are they free? low cost to free you mentioned some free items yeah low cost um, to free a lot of them are also on the freemium model too where if you pay more it's free but if you pay more you could get more features right um you could do a lot of that stuff but as entrepreneurs starting out the best advice I could give you right now is document everything mm. and that kind of goes back to the e thing you're going to get to a point where you need to outsource or get help or you get your first employee and you're going to get to the point where you need to document your processes and your procedures so that in the event that you can do something or it's easy to train somebody yeah you could hand off a document which is what they call a standard operating procedure sop for them to kind of get uh, abroad yeah mm-hmm. i think also you could look at your network mm-hmm. um to help you automate some things you may be able to arrange maybe a barter agreement or something with another entrepreneur that may need something similar or you may need something from them and they need something from you that mm-hmm. you could kind of work it out mm-hmm. um like for example if travis needed some social media assistance and I needed some website assistance. You got me. We got each other. Yeah, Mm. exchange Mm -hmm. that so that at the end of the day, you have some support or you have some assistance with what it is that you're trying to do. I'm thinking about websites as well. I know some people, let's say you're not able to have access to internet or you're not by your phone um, all the time Mm. and a client is interested in getting your product or your service. In terms of the website, are there any 
things that you could think of or tools off the bat that you could think of with a contact form or something that a client would be able to place an order or for, let's say with Greg, um, what do you use for your cookies currently? Do you have something on the website where a client can submit an order that will be filled or I don't yeah, know, how does yeah, it work? Yeah, I've, I've had it from, I think, um, very first started taking order online and pay as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Using PayPal, you can use your card to pay right, for order yes, online. Yeah. yeah, as much as possible. If you can do online payment, please do that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I don't know why a lot of companies still don't. It's, it's a lot of it. it's, it's a lot of it's a cultural thing, and there's yeah. a lot of red tape in terms of like the process of getting it signed up. <laughs> but that, I like just what Gail said. I definitely agree. There are a lot of free things that you just need to take time to research to use, mm -hmm. at least to get to the prototype stage of proving that you could run. If, if, even if you, if it's just a simple contact form where you can get an order from, mm -hmm. that's a good first step. And there are a lot of free tools. That you could use. You could even use like SurveyMonkey or MailChimp, if, depending on how you hack it, mm -hmm. to take those orders. Will kind of gi uh, give you that free model. Okay, Travis. Yes. Let me ask. Now I know my answer, but I don't know. I don't have a job to say first. <laughs> what would you say uh, would be your biggest hurdle right now when it comes to setting up your business to function without you? Um, removing myself from the creative process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the the biggest concern I have right now, which I'm trying to figure out how to solve, is that I love development. I love programming. I love coding. Uh, that's one of like I could get in flow all day just sitting down and, and coding. Mm -hmm. But I realize as I scale, I, I can't do that. Like you know, I can't always be a part of every project because mm -hmm. I'll get to the point where we work on 10, 20 projects at a time, and I can't work on 10, 20 projects. And mm -hmm. then even as the business grows to that scale. I'll be unfortunately moving and less and less away from programming more and more management mm. things. So what I'm learning to do or trying to learn to do is how to still be creative in programming and still utilize solutions that not only solve problems but are actually unique, mm -hmm. but still be removed enough where I could outsource the main things that need to be done. Mm -hmm. So I come into that last that, that last part, mm -hmm. or that part where we do the planning phase and then finish up at the end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking for someone to either help in the middle, um, even from the administration st stuff, where I, I'm trying to discover my most mundane tasks and my creative process mm -hmm. and seeing how I could outsource it. Uh, I got you. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. My thing cool. is trust issues. Yeah, I yeah. was gonna say that. <laughs> yeah. I got trust issues. My problem is nobody can do it like you. And yeah, it's a good and a bad thing mm. that when you feel it's like a double edged sword. Yeah, it because is. people pay you to do what you do your way, right. but you realize like only you could do it. Put you in a bottleneck. Right. Mm. Yeah. And, I, and I'm and I'm a perfectionist, and I I can be kind of hard when it comes to the product because mm -hmm. I know I'm hard on myself. I'm, I'm in this kitchen by myself, but I'm talking to myself like, I'm, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm in right. trouble by myself. Yeah, like, yeah, if I mess yeah. something up, like, I'm in the, so I know I can be. Hell's no, not that bad. Oh. But, I, <laughs> <laughs> but you can get an idea of, you know, how it would be. But it's just me. So it, right. I just look like a crazy person. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, my thing is trust, trust issues. Trusting persons to be able to do what it is you do at the same level or better. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I long for the day when I can find somebody. But I'm not saying they don't exist, but I long for the day when I can find somebody that does what I do better than me. But it's, it's truth, uh, and truthfully, what you have to realize is it's a lie that you tell yourself in terms of delegating. Is like when you you know you need to delegate just to to separate the task, mm -hmm. and then slowly the lie creeps back in. I know they're not doing it like me. Let me take it again, and then you then you end up doing everything that you wanted to mm -hmm. to outsource in the first mm -hmm. place. And I think as you grow, especially when you in terms of building teams, you realize that you're not they're not everybody on the team is meant to do it your way. Right, right. Now there's a high level and standard mm -hmm. that needs to be met, but they don't necessarily need to do it your exactly. way. Exactly. And the way, way that they do it might right. add another flavor to right, it. Right, right. So you just right. have to be you have to be true to yourself that, to that's, let that but go. But that's my thing. Just yeah. that, that initial stage and yeah. allowing it in the first place. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. That's, that's, that's hard. Right. It is hard. That's how with a lot it. of entrepreneurs in terms of moving from a solo Solopreneur, mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah, solo entrepreneur to, to like a team, like building yeah, a like team. to hiring people and getting employees, and they, it, it, I've seen it where they've asked you to do a task, but because they have in their mind the way that it's supposed to be yes. done, yes, any way that you do it right. is gonna be know, wrong, some or like, yeah, even though like you're arriving at the same result. Mm. The fact that you didn't do it this particular way becomes a problem as well. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I don't think that's my issue. Like, if the end result is the same, 
I really Are am you not. Sure? Gonna, yeah, yeah, but now you I want to. a certain way that you put your ingredients yes, together? Uh, yes, a certain way. A I certain think way. the best thing to do is to convey exactly what you have in your mind, and a lot of people do not communicate exactly what it you all, have. It all boils down to communication. To everything. What's on everything. paper. So you are going to have to do literally a detailed list. Inclusive of video on picture mm, and inclusive uh -huh. of pictures, where if I grab this manual mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I'm working for you, I'll be able to do right, exactly what you need to do. Right. And you got to realize, and it may seem, and especially to a lot of entrepreneurs that may be listening to this, mm -hmm. it may seem like, man, that's a lot of work and bullshit to do, but the t you have to really think long term yeah. how much time you save. Yes. When you get to 5, 10, 20 people, mm -hmm. once you do it right the first time, and right. you could just hand off a thing. Mm -hmm. Because if you have to stop your business every week, to do training, you 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 actually end up losing money. Yes. Yeah. Because of that. Yeah, that's lost time. Yeah. Time time is precious commodity. Time, like they say, time is money. Mm. And um, but yeah, that's that's my that's my biggest hurdle. The but I mean also it's, it's still from home, mm. and you know I don't want to just bring anybody into in my home. home. Yes. So this is why having the storefront is going to alleviate some of those things. Yeah, and it'll yeah. be the ultimate opportunity yeah. to then delegate certain tasks to people, and, and it's going to be a test. It's going to be a test for me, but I, I, I'm be open. You just got to be open-minded. Yeah, I, I'm excited open about it, and and like I said, you got to keep the big picture in mind. Mm -hmm. It's so that it can free me up to do more, so I'm able to work on the business as opposed to in the business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I seen another catering company. They didn't um, spend money on the shop front, but they worked out an agreement with uh, a restaurant owner. They would come in in the evening and do whatever preparation work they had to do. And then the restaurant would open during the day, and they were responsible for cleanup and so on. So even if you're unable to get the capital, all the capital you need right away, mm -hmm. um, especially for people I don't know who may be doing baking or cooking or whatever you may do for your business, um, consider partnering with somebody else or trying to work out something else if you don't have all of the capital right mm -hmm. away mm -hmm. um, to assist you with the business as well. Yeah, that, that's that's. That's important. I mean, if, yeah. if you really want to do it, you'll figure it out. You'll yeah. find ways to to make it happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, with whatever you have. And I think, to, well, to be honest, I like bootstrapping. I don't like when oh, you yeah. have a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. I think oh, money yeah. can be very problematic, especially if you have too much of it. Mm -hmm. People think they can just throw money at problems yeah, and they'll yeah, solve yeah. them. No. So I think not having money is usually a good thing because that's how you're you... you resourceful. It, yeah, it makes yeah. you resourceful. You're, and you have to you're most creative up. that way too. And the thing is, especially with technology, you'd be surprised how much things are out there that you could use yeah. for free. Mm -hmm. Because like... It's the inner, like the internet so literally like makes it <laughs> no it, it, it makes it virtually 100% possible I mean I understand it may be a huge learning curve uh -huh. right what I would recommend for the entrepreneur getting out if, it, if uh, at the bare minimum of it being less techy as possible two main things to do is to document everything like literally do step by step your process mm -hmm. and if you take an audit of that process and you understand that there may be other people in the industry that does that same thing or specialize in that same thing, try to partner up and team with them and build that network. Mm -hmm. That's the best things you could do on an offline uh, scenario without being super techie. Mm -hmm. And when you get to the point where demand rises, then you're kind of forced into innovating and learning new tools or investing in new tools in order to build and grow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, let, um, timeline. Have you set a timeline for yourself in terms of you know, being able to have, business being oh, able being to be function and building your business. Well, like if you said, okay, in three years, I want to be able to get rid of these tasks and have yeah. this amount of persons. You know what I mean? Have you set timelines? No, I haven't had a, a timeline. I definitely would say by the time I hit early thirties, a lot of the things that you do yet. No, 27. <laughs> but by the time I'm in early 30s, a lot of things that I'm doing now, I probably will be doing less in, in terms of focusing on more higher level stuff. Mm. Um, and it's kind of weird for me, the reason why I haven't set those timelines, because even when I travel now, I still work, because I work, I mean, I could work mm -hmm. anywhere with anywhere. a good connection, mm -hmm. and I still automate a lot of those processes. But like, uh, the downside of that is that I haven't really fully taken a 100% vacation yet. Because even when you I travel, I work. Too. But th and that's the danger too, because I like it so much. Yeah, and that's that's that's, yeah. that's a good. You sound like this man over here. <laughs> yeah, but and that's the thing too in terms of. Yeah. Gregory tried to bake cookies at, right. the, at the game. Because we had that. No, no, no. Like, I don't. It ain't baking, but like right. like work can be uh, very many different things because 
I would travel, I, and I don't. I, I, right. make, I don't want to see no flipping oven when I go away. Right? <laughs> right. I don't want to see no oven or cookies when I go away. No bad bath, uh, no nothing like that. No, <laughs> but I actually do. You know, you still do some work between, like answering customers through yeah. WhatsApp or yeah. like like mobile work that you can do on your yeah. phone or whatever. Yeah. I still end up doing those things, mm -hmm. but I try my best to unplug and not really do any tasks whenever I travel in most circumstances and I and I think I do a good job of that because I, I kind of disconnect well when mm -hmm. I travel mm -hmm. because when I'm away it's, I can't help you right mm -hmm. it's not much I can do for you yeah, anyway yeah, so yeah, so yeah. so I do a good job of unplugging when I travel but it's still that issue of income I still want some money, money to be making mm -hmm. while I'm mm -hmm. traveling mm -hmm. so that's why I see it's important for me personally to mm -hmm. you know build the business to the point to where I don't have to be there mm -hmm. right I don't want to be there and then in terms of like make the whole making money while you sleep thing yeah. It's like other high level things, like especially doing a lot of documentation. There's a lot of things technically that I want to um, dumb down mm -hmm. and then put into a, a e course or a workshop mm -hmm. where that money could be multiplied and you could do those things while you, while yeah, you sleep type nice. of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a balance of still learning a lot of things and learning where kind of the market is going, mm -hmm. you know, with that buzzword. And that's the same thing about building your business too, is like, even though technology is hot and popping, it could it could change in the next five years. It's always changing. So you can't be, even though I love it now, is what Gary Vee always says, you can't fall in love with the way you make money and you always have to be receptive in terms of mm -hmm. what people actually want, the supply and demand type of thing, mm -hmm. and build your business uh, accordingly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I think it's a good way to do that is to, Try and put yourself out of business. Right. You That's know what, what I said, mean? Right? Yeah, continuing yeah. learning and all yeah. yeah, so just building on that. And you gotta adjust because technology is always advancing. Right. Next year, something else probably may be the new hot thing. So you have to always be aware, mm -hmm. conscious of what's, you know, I trending. I cookies delivered by drones and things. <laughs> they shop right. the plant. But like, yeah, I, I, I wish I could do it. <laughs> uh, so Gail, on the social media side, I know social media kind of based on a lot of things automated already in terms of scheduling posts yeah. or using tools that integrate with that yeah as from an overall business perspective one what are like what have been what has been the best advice or tips that you come across to help you increase automation mm -hmm. and then what advice would you give people in terms of automating social media or yeah well the in terms of automation for social media there are a lot of tools available Hootsuite, HubSpot does mm -hmm. two off the top of my head um, where you could kind of put the content in. I think the only, the time, the most time consuming thing is generating content. And, um, but in terms of automation, it's being made very easy to do. Um, the only danger is that with everything changing almost on a daily mm -hmm. basis. You gotta be, you, it's still to be automation, attentive. You, yeah, you, uh, I've seen, um, I think there was a, a tweet where a company was selling, let's say they were selling clothing or whatever, and there was a school shooting the day before and they had shoot your shot ba like a, ba yeah. like a basketball oh. the same day. or something, right? Wow. Which it was, yeah. they apologized because it was automated. Yeah, they yeah, had yeah. prepared that But the dangers of much, automation. You know, well yeah. in advance, but it was just the wrong time for that to happen. Mm -hmm. So, you know, stuff like that is still, you could kind of get it automated, but then you still need to be on top of it. And um, you need to find people that are conscious of those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I don't think I give an example. I have an exa another example. I don't think I give that yet due to the sensitivity of it. Mm. Um, but it's just being on top of it, looking at trends, look at what's going on, and then making your content relevant to what's going on. So that's why it's a little dangerous. Right. Not dangerous, but when it comes need to, to automation, aware. maybe. Do you think it's a danger in terms of like it's it can be taken as generic or robotic mm. or not personable yeah. enough for some people? Yeah, and, and I've. I, I, and this, that is came up too in terms of Gary Vaynerchuk. He had a, his most recent book. He turns to like automate anything a human should do, a human should do. Mm -hmm. Anything that is just general information should be automated. Like if someone is buying something off of your e-commerce website, mm -hmm. automate a thank you response as soon as it closes. But if someone has a complaint, or have a human person actually take the time to answer that. Mm -hmm. Because if you let a, 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 a robot do yeah. that, then it's kind of, you know, Very runs off. And it, even in a social media perspective, because if you have a Facebook page and someone message you, you could set up messages to say, thank you for messaging us. And you know, we'll you know, we'll get in touch or send an email to this. Yeah. Not only is it impersonal, but you lose an opportunity to actually have a teachable moment or build your brand mm -hmm. uh, from that as well. Mm -hmm. So I think it's still some level of awareness. Yeah. 
um, that needs to go in terms of that automation to still be personal, but mm -hmm. it, yeah. but automate only like the Something things like that, that you could say thank you for contacting us. Um, we will be with you shortly. Within Sixty seconds. Or even yeah. if you can to that make your automated message almost seem like it's. Somebody a personal there. message or mm. someone actually answering you mm. mm -hmm. because I, I think there's a lot of value in that right you know, relationship it's, it's, it's definitely a case by case basis for sure definitely yeah. depending on the type of business too yeah because you if you if your cable or electricity go out and you get an automated <laughs> response <laughs> and then you don't get any message for like two three days like right, you turn off yeah. like you turn right off I, I get into that right now mm. uh -oh. it ain't with my electricity but my phone uh -oh. listen <laughs> you all need to get it together because I only get automated message and it's been a couple days right. and nobody gets to me yet. Um, in terms of <laughs> <laughs> switching the subject, <laughs> 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 um, Jesse gave a future sponsors for future sponsors. So, um, in terms of bringing in the context of Bahamian businesses, a lot of Bahamian businesses still brick and mortar, and they, even the the majority of the nature of the business for where we are, like hospitality being you know tourism oh, being that much, <laughs> where you need a personal touch. You need, show on that. You need a personal yes, touch. I, I definitely believe in terms of documentation and training is super important, yes. especially from the customer service training, part. Yes, and we don't it. do that for a lot of businesses no, here. Don't. I agree. But I believe some, some of these people who some of these businesses hire, I don't think no amount of training can help some of these people, I can tell you now. Yeah, I don't. I, 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 uh, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> in the best. Because let me tell like, I, I'll give you an example. Mm. Company I used to work to, they used to do training. Mm. We used to have a uh, customer service training every day, every year. They would send us out, pay us and everything to get customer service training. And some of these people would still provide the most lackluster service you could ever mm. imagine. But, but again, that goes back to even from the human aspect of building your business to run uh, out of you. Like, don't just hi like have standards for your business mm -hmm. yes. and how it should run, mm -hmm. and it up it's up to you not to hire just somebody to do a job, like someone that actually takes care and values the business, has right. the same type of vision as you, because you want to build that team so yes. you could have that number two or number three that could run the business even at the point where you don't even have to think about being yes. next to something for crisis control. Yeah. I think where a lot of Bahamian businesses, and, and, and it's a trickle down effect in terms of customer service, is like, oh, I just need somebody to do this, yeah. hire that. Yes. So yeah. there's no training in that or no, you know. They just want a robot. A robot. Yeah. And some companies have started to do like personality tests now, so that might be an option for you if you're looking at hiring people. Um, which the answers to those tests will provide you with information that an interview cannot um, because you're talking to somebody that wants a job, they're going to put on the best face, they're going to say the right things, etc. And I think that's that why the big personality test. Yeah, that's yeah. why the big companies like Google and stuff like they would have weird questions mm -hmm. in the interview process. Mm -hmm. Like they would throw you off to really get a sense of who you are as a right. person mm -hmm. and how quickly you think on your feet. Because anybody can prepare prepare themselves for the you know the interview. generic questions yeah. when it comes to interviewing mm -hmm. for a job. But I think that's important and important. An important uh, um, part of setting your business up the run without you is hiring the right people. Hiring the right people. Hiring the right people. And yep. We got to do another show on that. Too. Yeah, we have. Yeah. We have, we have, we have, we have so many shows. And, and yeah, and, and that <laughs> in terms of like, like just having what your values are as a company, and yes. even just making sure. And when you sit down with somebody, like. Yeah, that's a whole different show. Yeah. That's yeah, a whole that's different show. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I don't even get that out. deep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to do 30 minutes so we can, we can wrap this one up then. Nice. Gail, close this out, please. Yes, you don't sir. Mind. Thank you very much for joining us. We hope that you have been provided with excellent information. And we appreciate you tuning in. Until next time, Travis Miller, Gregory Colley. The second. The second. And Gail Hanna. Okay, let me see if I can do this now. Losers <laughs> make excuses. <laughs> Winners make adjustments. I don't appreciate that. Yeah. Good night, people. <laughs> <Making it easy>. <laughs> 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 All right. That was quick. It's the after show. It's the after show. I think yeah, that was a Three good. I like how when we do a show, we have five shows from the show. I know, right? It's crazy how much we could, like, yeah. like it's crazy. Some, yeah, it's and we fun. couldn't do it without you people. Yes. All you! Two all two of y'all watching! Couldn't do it! <laughs> <laughs> and the two of us is me and Gail. <laughs> 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 Alright, we're going to do another show. Yes, we are. 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 Y